Hi friends, welcome to the class of Formal Language and Automata Theory. So here you can observe two important terms that is Formal Language and the other one is Automata Theory. So how these two terms are linked? We'll see first what is this Automata Theory and then we'll go for Formal Languages. So first of all, what is Automata Theory? Anyway, I want to concentrate less on theory part and more on problems. So we'll see what is this Automata Theory first. Of course, Automata Theory is a study of abstract computational devices. Here device, what is device? So in, in general, we can say a device means which take input and perform some particular task and gives respective output. But here he is asking about abstract devices, which are invisible abstract means here, but they will perform the same task. So like this, some devices are there, which those devices we call them as abstract computational devices. And those devices only we need to learn here. You call it as devices or machines, which will follow some rules and automata in the sense abstract computing device. So that's why this is automata theory. So why these virtual device exist? what what is this actually let us consider this example here if the circuit is closed the bulb bulb will be in on mode otherwise the bulb will be in half mode so how physically you can say that if you close this then only this bulb is on that means there is some electrical that is some electricity is flowing in this that's why it is glowing so like this you can say but you cannot exactly see that how this electricity is flowing but you can say that there has some process that is working that's why this bulb is in on mode so like this you can prove so this is the thing here also some abstract devices are there which will work in your any device like in computers in mobile phones everywhere whatever you can in everywhere whenever you give some input internal it process and it gives some output so how this process happens internally and we are much concentrated on like how effectively it is working. So that is what here you can consider in your automata theory. So abstract devices are models of real world computations. Of course, computations happens everywhere on your laptop, on your cell phone, etc. And why do we need abstract models? So this is about computability and complexity. Actually, computability means, of course, ability to compute. That means for a particular problem, whether you can solve the answer or not, or you can call it as whether we can solve by using a device or machine or not, we need to find it first. Let us suppose a simple example if you want to take, if, I, if you want to find the speed of a vehicle, you require distance and time. But if I give only distance, can you find the speed? No. So the ability to compute is no. You cannot able to compute not only this but even if you give all the requirements some of the problems may not be solved in real world of course some problems can be solved so that is what we need to find and we call it as computability or you call it as decidability or undecidability like this we have and anyway we'll see these things in the concepts of np had and np complete and there we'll have we'll discuss much about these things now complexity that means if you can able to find the answer what might be the complexity to find it and you can find is there any easiest way compared to the present method so like this we have we can find it this is we call it as complexity now we can observe in order to find a solution for a particular problem we require computability and complexity and these things can be explained by automata theory first of all how these things how for a particular problem how a device works how a machine works we need to find here so this is about automata theory now coming to formal languages we know about languages and what about this formal languages so here we need to connect these languages with the devices of course here i have given these things are these are all we call it as formal languages and this total entire representation we call it as Chomsky hierarchy and here you can see the devices are machines these are abstract devices are abstract machines 
finite automata, push down automata, linear bounded automata, Turing machine. These are not physical devices, these are abstract devices. And how these devices will work can be explained by the language. And of course, any language will work according to the grammar, respectively. So here also, we have different, different machines. And for each machine, you have different, different languages that are accepting as well as respective grammars here and the entire representation here you call it as Chomsky hierarchy and remember one point here in the deep circle I have represented one language that is you called as regular language and after that context free language here context sensitive this is recursively enumerable remember this point like regular language this language is subset of this this language is subset of this this anyway I'll explain much about all those things anyway your subject is all about these machines languages as well as grammar and anyway we'll see we'll go in depth of all these things first of all we need to see what is at least one machine anyway we'll go for first what is this finite automata after that i'll explain how remaining machines will work so that you can understand better afterwards so that that is what my plan first of all Remember this, this is we call it as Chomsky hierarchy. Now I discussed about languages. Languages means the basic thing. It will start from alphabets as well as strings. From that only language will have language in the sense. Of course, we know that is to communicate. Basic thing is to communicate. Now we'll see the basic things like alphabets and strings. Of course, we know alphabet is a finite set of symbols. Some examples here is given different different alphabets I have taken. Of course, if you consider in English, you have like these letters and this is a uh, numbers. Of course, these are the alphabet in numbers with the base 10. This is one sort of alphabet where it consists alphabets as well as one symbol hash. And this is another alphabet. You can create a set of alphabet based on the alphabet. You can create strings. And afterwards, you can make into a collection of words which will give a sentence. Like this, you can make a language. Here, those languages you call them as formal language. Now, coming to the strings. What is a string? It's a it's over on an alphabet with a finite sequence of symbols. That means if I take one string from this S1 alphabet, the string should consisting only these letters. And if I take an alphabet, uh, if I take a string from this alphabet that should consisting only this alphabet we'll see examples like for the first alphabet over sigma 1 that means for this I can say this is a one string that means any set of collection of alphabets you call it as a st string here for a, this particular alphabet and here 9021 this is the particular string for this you cannot say here like if I write a t at is a string in this language why because a and t are not belongs to this alphabet you cannot say here 1 2 12 is a string here in this alphabet why because here you don't have 1 and 2 those are as alphabets like this so whatever the string you have taken that letters must be from this alphabet and like this also here you can see first alphabet only open brace close brace here you have one more one string now coming to the language language is a set of strings over an alphabet now alphabet from alphabet you have strings from strings you will have a language here you can see it is a set of strings remember this point language in the sense if i take l1 it's a set of all strings over s1 that contains substring here you can observe i can say one language where it consisting a set of strings which should satisfy this constraint that is given that is that should contain a substring at at must be there like can i write cat can i write rat can i write eight that means at must be there can i write gate like this can i write 81 no this i cannot write why because one does not belongs to this s1 alphabet like this and you can see one another language l2 set of strings over s2 s2 consisting only numbers we have seen in the previous slide so where the constraint is divisible by 7 so all the numbers which are divisible by 7 that means the alphabet which is having only the symbols 0 1 to up to 9 so like from all symbols you can get these numbers 
14 1 4 belongs to the alphabet like this you can have a language that is another language now set of all strings of the form s hash s that means s in the sense it's any string over alphabet like what he's saying is whatever you take s as a string that must be repeated after hash like if i take l3 the examples are the language can be taken like this hash must be there if i take here a b here also a b a b hash a b one string which belongs to this l3 something like c d hash c d whatever you have taken here it that must be taken here like this you need to consider anything like cat hash cat like this you can consider so this is you call it as another language now l4 set of all strings over s4 where every open brace every open brace is matched with subsequent close brace the condition is you cannot put all the open brace and close brace but you need to satisfy a constraint that is open brace has to match with the close brace so i can write like this matching i can write like this matching i can write like this also matching so all these strings which form a language that is l4 now you can understand how the formal language will be so this is about languages so this is a basic thing about what is an alphabet string and language now slowly we'll move into the concepts of our automata theory in the next lecture thank you Thank you.